Our speaker tonight is Dr. Michael Behe. Dr. Behe received his PhD in biochemistry from the University of Pennsylvania in 1978. He then went on to the National Institutes of Health, where he did postdoctoral work, and he is currently a professor of biochemistry at Lehigh University, where his research focuses on DNA structure, um, uh, especially particular sequences of nucleotides. Um, he's the author of Darwin's Black Box, The Biochemical Challenge to Evolution, which has caused quite a stir over the past year. And uh, he's going to talk for about an hour. And after that, we're going to have questions. Because we are videotaping, we ask that you come and line up at these two microphones so that we can hear the, hear the questions and preserve them for posterity. <laughs> Think hard what you want to say. And uh, now, without further ado, let's introduce and welcome uh, Dr. Michael Behe. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'm going to turn this on uh, because it takes a minute to warm up. Um, in the 17th and 18th century, science was making a lot of progress, and in particularly, biology was. Uh, the anatomy uh, of a lot of animals were being compared, plants as well. And scientists began to notice that there were a number of resemblances between different animals. <laughs> and the theory of common descent began to be discussed, but nobody uh, could even guess what might cause uh, transformations of the magnitude that would be necessary. But uh, in 1859, uh, Charles Darwin uh, published his elegant theory of evolution by natural selection. And what Darwin proposed was that uh, he noticed that there was variation in all species of animals. And he also knew that there was not enough food for all organisms that were born to survive and reproduce. And he reasoned then that the organisms whose chance variation gave them an edge in the struggle to survive would, in, in fact, outcompete their siblings and survive and, and leave offspring. And if the, uh, the variation could be inherited, then perhaps over time, the characteristics of the species would change. And perhaps over great periods of time, great changes could occur. So Darwin had hit upon uh, something that nobody thought could be done, a simple, elegant mechanism uh, of evolution. But even in the uh, 19th century, a number of scientists thought that there were uh, structures in nature which might not be able to be explained by this theory. And in one in particular was the eye. And when it's noticed that the eye is a complex structure uh, composed of the retina and the lens and ocular muscles and needed tear ducts, and, and it, if any of these structures were missing, then the uh, person or, or animal would be, and their vision would be severely compromised or it might be outright blind. Well, Charles, da Charles Darwin knew about the eye too, and he dealt with the eye in a section of the origin of species called um, Organs of Extreme Perfection and Complication. And Darwin said essentially, well, he didn't know how the eye might have evolved. But, he said, if you look at various eyes in current organisms in nature, you might begin to be able to see how such a transformation might occur. And he said, some simple organisms have a very simple um, light-sensitive structure. Here are some light-sensitive cells surrounded by pigment cells. In such a structure, <clears throat> it hardly could be said to be an eye, light coming from any direction could set off the light-sensitive cells. So the organism could sense light and dark, but it can't really sense which direction the light is coming from. However, if you take this light-sensitive spot and put it in a little cup, 